Just a little reminder. Um, for more views, we have uh, the Twitter tag. And just to give you a little reminder of the Twitter tag, it's hash ITU World 11. And you'll find a lot of views there from all around the world. And I think it'll be very, very interesting to take a look at that as well. Dan gave us a very good start off point. He said, the future is here. So those of you who have been around in this event for many, many years, I think you'll remember the youth forum. Those wonderful kids that we found all around the world, great minds, they grew into our hearts. I loved working with them. I had a wonderful time, and I know the Secretary General did the same. They loved him, and they loved a few other people as well. Sometimes we, I even felt like a dinosaur in front of them, okay? But they were great, and that's our future. In hard times, it's very, very difficult to get such a large group of children in one place at the same time. So we took a different approach, and this is a change that we've brought into this event. By doing this, we've managed to reach out to over 10,000 kids, young youth of the future. And there's something called the Meta Conference. And I think it's a wonderful tool. The kids don't have to physically be here. We don't have to have chaperones to run around and take care of them. And it's wonderful. So we would like to really come out with something to present what the Meta Conferences are about, because we have six outstanding innovators in this event. So with this, I'd like to invite Iwan to come up and present the Meta Conference. Thank you very much. The ITU leads on a lot of things. And I can tell you now that it leads in terms of engaging young people online, arguably in discussions that young people are not meant to understand or take part in. The ITU Meta Conference has indeed managed to reach out to 10,000 school students, just a little bit more than that, from five continents, not just taking part in the event this week, but over the past 21 days, they have been working in schools, going through design thinking processes. They have been inventing new products, new ideas, to help solve some of the world's most challenging problems, problems indeed that they have chosen. 10,000 young people from 98 schools across five continents, their ideas have been viewed in 127 nations online. They are going to, next week, influence 150,000 of their classmates as they present what they've learnt from this conference and the process of designing new solutions for old problems to school assemblies, class reunions, and parent meetings. World2011.us is their site, not yours. But you can go and visit. You can see what they've been producing, and you can continue to see what they are producing over the next weeks, months, years. What is there to see in World 2011? Well, there's a very colorful pictorial blog summing up the ideas that they've been prototyping. You can see how they chose their ideas. This is how six-year-olds choose which of the world's greatest problems they'll solve. Rock, scissors, paper. They've been producing marketing materials, like this school in Ohio, which produced a very punchy video you may have seen. They have been going through empathy studies, a school in Georgia, United States, trying to understand what it's like to take water with their partner school in Zambia. This school prototyping what they believed might help in terms of environmental sustainability, uh, working out how they could construct new forms of clothing from crisp packets. And this particular school here prototyped all sorts of amazing solutions, no. <coughs> some involving technology, okay. some not involving technology so much. Wheelchairs with built-in cell phones to facilitate the communication of disabled people. Why not put water filters in polluted riverways so that we can have clean water for fish and for drinking? And of course, they've been in your panels, and you'll have noticed this in your panels. We've been able as well to get some of our VIP guests and ministers giving answers back. Uh, Mrs. McGuala explaining that the internet will not run out, thanks to her organization and others. 
Juliana explaining how young people can make a bit of trouble and disrupt the world. And a brand executive explaining how young people can grab all of our attention with their world-changing ideas. And for the teachers involved, they've never seen anything like it. These are just some of the tweets that have come in to me as private messages or have been published. Uh, this one in the bottom left uh, is from a teacher at a parent-teacher evening last night in the United States when her students were reflecting on their learning for the first part of this year, the one thing that they felt had made a difference was this participating is real life in education to the maximum. ITU event. Thank you so much, ITU. What a great experience for my students. What we do in seeing class matters globally. So, ITU, you have made a difference to 10,000 young people's lives, and in the coming weeks, you're going to make a difference to a lot more children's lives. The global reach of their tweets alone has been one million. Yeah. <clears throat> and the ideas that they have come up with have looked after the notion of providing education for all, looking at health matters, how to create more sustainable energy in places that currently are squandering their resources. The key to this is that technology features as the mechanism for them to communicate and socialize with us. What's fascinating? is that they most often see the biggest problems not relating to technology. They have found it hard to understand how we can talk about super fast broadband and mobile connections, how we can talk about the latest smart thing when some of their compatriots in other countries, some of their youth, can't afford to have clean water, can't afford to clothe themselves. And it was wonderful to see that argument spill onto the panel, onto the stage. One of my students, because they feel like our class, don't they? Our class of 10,000. When they were brainstorming their ideas, one kid said, oh, we have to be realistic, because they saw all these people in suits. And their classmate immediately said, no, we don't have to be realistic. We have to be dreamers. No. <coughs> <coughs>